Hi guys, Squirrel here and welcome to episode 10 of my Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial series. I hope you're all very much enjoying Microsoft Flight Simulator and uh, having a lot of fun with flying around. Now, in episode 10, we're going to discuss Mixture. Yes, this has been a requested video actually. A lot of people have asked me about Mixture and explain it, what it's for, how you use it, how do you lean. Uh, I'll try and explain those concepts uh, in this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want uh, future content from me. Lots of content on Microsoft Flight Sim. Many playlists you can go and look at. And there's even a playlist for this tutorial series, which is in the video description. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, first of all, what is mixture? What is this red lever down here that most people tend to ignore and do absolutely nothing with? Although... Probably some of you have worked out that if you actually pull this, you basically cut the engine, right? So it must be doing something useful. But normally you just you just bothered about this one, aren't you? The throttle. This is the one that matters most. However, there's a bit more to it than that. This mixture lever is actually quite beneficial, important, significant. Certainly in the real world it is. What does the lever do? Well, the mixture lever controls the amount of fuel that is mixed with the air in the combustion engine. So basically, if we adjust the mixture, what we're doing is we're controlling the air-fuel ratio. That's the amount of fuel that gets mixed with the oxygen that then combusts, right? So combustion engines are generally set up to run at their best, at their optimum, at or near sea level, which is what we are now. We're at Renton, if you look at the altitude outside, it is almost sea level because the actual sea is right there in front, at the end of the runway, in fact. Um, but at different altitudes, that's not the case. So as you go higher in altitude, the air pressure actually comes down. You might know this from, you know, you know people, people who go mountain climbing, that kind of thing, or live in high elevations. It's difficult to breathe at higher altitudes because the air is thinner and with less pressure. There's less oxygen around. And what that means for us pilots is as we climb, we need to adjust this mixture because the same reason there's not as much oxygen to go around which means we have to lean the fuel out as it's called so we're burning less fuel we're mixing less fuel with the oxygen that process is called leaning and it does have a number of benefits firstly in a real plane it actually reduces plug fouling that's the where you get that black soot all over the all over the spark plugs it increases power as we'll see this in a minute as we go out as we go climbing and we go into cruise it actually increases the power that you have and it reduces fuel burn and fuel burn is a big thing if you're paying for fuel well, you might not be flying for real but if you're flying in something like say FS economy where you're renting your planes dry and paying for your fuel if you burn less fuel you'll get charged less money it's as simple as that so setting your mixture is very important so let's look at how we actually set mixture correctly so I've just taken off out of Renton airfield and you can see my altitude here is coming up on 2,000 feet. We're climbing at about 600 feet per minute, as you can see here. And what's actually going to happen is these RPMs are going to come down. This is gradually going to come down. We're also going to start losing airspeed. And the reason for this is because as we're climbing to higher and higher altitudes, our mixture is now progressively becoming more wrong and the engines are becoming very inefficient. It's burning too much fuel for the amount of oxygen. You can already see, perhaps, as we've been talking here, that the RPMs have come down. If I speed up the sim just a little bit, that will help demonstrate the effect of what's happening. As we get higher and higher, speed comes down, the RPMs are coming down. If you was to leave the mixture in its current setting, you would probably wonder why you can't climb to higher altitudes. Why does the aircraft just feel really, really sluggish? I mean, we're only at nearly 3,000 feet now, and we've lost so much power, it's crazy. So let me just put it back on normal speed. And I'll show you straight away, instantly, if we take this mixture back, just even 10%, you'll see the power will come back, and our airspeed will come back, and you listen to the engine, it sounds so much better. Did you hear that? Just 10% mixture, and the RPMs came back. What if we do another 10%? Did we get more power? Did we get more airspeed? Are we, are we climbing better? How far should we go? Does this keep going? 70%? 70%? 70%? 70%? 
60 percent are we guessing i think we're guessing aren't we and that's the point is unless you know what you're doing you're just guessing you're just kind of playing around this mixture hoping to find the right value let's have a look at a slightly more scientific way of finding out the right mixture so here we are at 5,000 feet and we're in cruise basically so 5,000 feet 2400 rpm which is a nice rpm for cruise and we're doing about 110 knots i've guessed the mixture to be 60 percent it seemed like a good bet it's the engine sounds okay since we're producing decent amount of power i'm happy can we do any better well the answer is maybe maybe we can do better at this altitude and it's important to say something that when we do what we're about to do you need to make sure that you're not changing anything you're not changing your power you're not changing your altitude you're not varying anything and these techniques work on the Cessna 152 172 which is what this is a 172 because this is a fixed pitch propeller aircraft there's no blue lever here if you've got a blue lever here then there are different techniques which I'm not going to cover in this video so this is for relatively simple aircraft however the 172 does have an enormous advantage in that it has an EGT gauge and it also has a fuel fog for fuel flow gauge the EGT gauge is the exhaust gas temperature what that is is it's telling us directly from the engine there's a sensor and it's telling us what the temperature of the exhaust gases are coming out of that combustion chamber and we can use this it even has a little reference if you actually turn it there you go if you turn this thing you can actually set a marker and what this is for is because in in the real aircraft you'll have a pilot's operate handbook and it will tell you what the what the maximum EGT is for certain altitudes or certain density altitudes it'll say you know set it to here and this is what you need to be leaning for we don't have that but we can kind of use it to sort of remember what we was on so if I say put the marker on that mark there whoops we can see that the that's the EGT gauge as it currently stands notice also the fuel flow we are burning 10 11 12 12 gallons per hour that's the fuel that we're burning 12 gallons per hour that's quite a bit possibly we can do a little bit better so what we'll do is we'll we'll lean the mixture out we're on 60 percent let's lean it out to 50 percent and then wait we need to just wait because the egt actually takes a bit of time to change as the combustion happens we can already see that the the mark has actually gone up above the red line and the fuel flow, ga fuel flow gauge has actually bizarrely increased which i don't think is correct um but you know this is a not a study level aircraft so we'll, we'll roll with it and see what happens let's go back to say 40 percent and we'll see what happens then so okay a fuel flow has come down this time so fuel fuel flow is now nearly 10 gallons per hour and look at our egt our egt has gone pretty high actually it's gone right up so we're flying along and so let's just see what the rpms are doing so the rpms have dropped very slightly we're still doing 110 knots but we're burning less fuel and the exhaust gas temperature is higher can we go even less than that what happens so i'll tell you what let's before we do that let's put a little marker on here so we kind of figure out our maximum so that's where we were on that's that's the maximum we've achieved and if we pull back the mixture i'm just going to do it in five percent now because i don't want to cut the engine uh if we go back five percent fuel flow's on 10 and the needle has come down ever so slightly uh, we've actually lost some speed as well and i think we've lost some rpm 30 percent yeah you see it's come down again so the temperature is now coming down so what's happened is the mixture is now too thin it's too lean so what we do is we're going to use a technique um, it's called um, rich over what's it called now rich over um, peak that's it rich of peak it's called and what we need to do is put it back on what we found to be the peak which i think was 40 percent that's where we hit our peak so we go back to it's going to take time remember i think it should come back to this red mark i'm sure it's 40 percent just give it time so what we're looking for is what they call the peak egt the peak exhaust gas temperature that's what we're after is it going to get back up there I think it's more or less where it was 
40%, let's go 45, see if that brings it up. No, I think, I think it is 40. 40% 40 is our peak. So that is, let's just say that is our peak now. That's our peak uh, exhaust gas temperature. So rich of peak means you go, you go to find the peak with the EGT gauge and then you go slightly rich on it. So we would go either 5 or 10% probably is what you would do. So you make the, the mixture just slightly rich of the peak amount that you want. And this works fine when you're in cruise, okay? Because the engine is in a nice stable place and when you add a bit more fuel on top of the peak, the fuel acts as a coolant, believe it or not. So it, if you have more fuel, that actually cools the engine, which is important. Um, so this, this mixture setting that we have has now saved us some fuel burn. And, you know, in a real aircraft, I'm pretty certain that would be a bit lower than that. But whatever, we'll, we'll roll with it. And that is our new EGT value that we're aiming for. So this is set up for cruise, which is great. That's all you have to do. When you get into cruise, you can just use this technique, find the maximum EGT, and then just dial that in an extra 10%, and you're good. You're saving fuel. What do you do if you don't have an EGT gauge? Well, let's jump back in the 152, which doesn't have an EGT gauge, and we'll look at how we would use mixture settings on that to find the correct mixture. Okay, I'm in the Cessna 152. I'm at about 5,000 feet. We're pretty much trimmed out. This doesn't have an auto on it, by the way, so we had to manually just trim this out. We're about 5,000 feet, more or less level. We're doing about 100 knots, and our RPMs are on 2,400, which is good. We're on 70% mixture. We don't have an EGT gauge, so what can we use instead? Just re-trim slightly. I'm going to have to keep adjusting the plane as well. What can we use instead? We're going to use the RPM gauge. Because this is a fixed pitch propeller, it means that if we move the throttle, it directly affects the RPM. If we change the mixture, it will change the power that's generated, and that will affect the RPM. If this was a uh, variable pitch propeller, that's not the case, because what will happen is, as we make changes, the engine management system will make changes and keep the RPM the same, so it's going to fight us. So in a 152, we can do this no problem at all because it's a fixed pitch propeller plane. <laughs> Just bear that in mind. It doesn't have that blue lever. So 2400 RPM, we're on 70%. Let's bring it back 10% and see if we notice any difference. Possibly a slight climb. Let's bring it back another 10%. Any difference? Mm, not a great deal, but we've just shaved off 20% of our mixture and we've not moved in the RPM well we've gone up a little bit we've certainly not gone down which means we generate the same amount of power what about say 45% I think that needle went down then let's try again 40% yeah so it went down right so okay we just found our our peak was about 50% I believe which is just over 2400 RPM so same thing, 50%, add an extra 10 back on, and we're golden. There you go. So we basically worked out fairly quickly how to um, set the mixture correctly in the Cessna 152. Now, as you do this more often, you'll get better at it. You'll glance over at your RPM gauge, you'll pull a lever back, and you'll wait for it to move up and down, and you know, you'll set it fairly quickly. But, you know, you, we've no fuel flow gauge on this, so we can't actually tell how much fuel we're burning like the 172. But you're burning less. If you're mixing less, you're burning less. So, therefore, you're saving money and um, you're doing the engine good. Now, there is, in fact, a third technique, which is like the less scientific one, but it is by far the quickest. It doesn't work amazingly well in Microsoft Flight Simulator because the aircraft's engine audio is not, like, wonderfully detailed when it comes to mixture anyway. Um, you can hear the engine RPMs. It's more about using sound than anything else. So you can hear the RPMs, and if you start to draw the mixture back, we know that the RPMs are going to come back because the mixture's wrong. And what you will actually hear in real life is the engine start to kind of, not so much cough and splutter, but you'll hear it roll kind of, it doesn't sound smooth anymore. The engine audio changes and it sounds a little bit rough. So bring the RPMs back, bring the mixture back, sorry, the RPMs will come back. And you can see we've already lost a load of RPM, but at this point, there you go, you, it's, it's, 
it's struggling, right? It's really struggling. But in real life, before then, when we got to like 40% or something, you, you, you hear it. You'll hear the change as the engine just gradually reaches that point of, I'm not, I'm not feeling great here, I've not got enough fuel. Um, and what's actually happening is like the cylinders are really misfiring and that's why they start to sound rough and you would then you would feed, you would listen for that rough point and then you would mix just above that and that would give you a very rough estimate of what you were kind of doing scientifically with the RPM gauge. So while we're up here just looking out at the Seattle scenery let's just discuss a little bit of you know more of the theory of it all. Uh, when you should lean out because it's important to know what to do when you're on the ground, when you're climbing, when you're in the air, and when you're descending. Like, when do you adjust the mixture? Well, first of all, any you know, most checklists will actually say mixture full rich. Like, they don't say mixture best power. They'll say mixture full rich. And there's good reasons for this. So all takeoffs below about 5,000 feet density altitude um, generally speaking, you put them in full mixture. And what, is, what does 5,000 feet density altitude mean? Well, I'll come to that in a second. But basically, for most airfields under about 5,000 feet, you will be using full mixture anyway. Anything above that kind of altitude, um, you need to go and do your run-up checks. So when you when you're taxiing, you'll generally go to a run-up area. That's where you'll bring up the uh, RPMs to like whatever the handbook says, like 1,700 RPM or something. Uh, you'll hold the brakes, you'll check the engine's running fine. Uh, at that point, you would then figure out the mixture level that you want to take off with. Um, that's the one that's going to give you the most power. But it's not like what we just did, because it's what gives you the most power, plus the engine's working very hard on climb out. So you need to be quite mixture rich, because the fuel will cool the engine as it's working really hard. So under 5,000 feet density altitude, generally we say full mixture anyway. And above 5,000 feet, you know, you're going to be leaning out, but you're not going to be leaning out very much. It's just enough to compensate for that extra altitude. But what you're really looking for is to make sure that the engine is running smoothly during the climb out, and you need to have enough fuel to cool the engine while it's doing so. Now, during the climb itself, when you take off from an airfield, during the climb, you want to be adjusting the mixture approximately every 2,000 feet. So, when I said to you earlier about the mixture, uh, only do it when the altitude's the same and the power level's the same, obviously during a climb that's just not the case. But if you, every 2,000 feet, uh, if you're adjusting the mixture back, you know, 5 or 10 percent, just listen to the engine. When you're climbing up, you will hear the engine start to struggle. I showed you that right at the start of the video. Um, just lean it out a little bit, just enough to get the engine smooth again. And then when you get into cruise, you can figure out the best mixture for your cruise. Once you're up in cruise, you get the RPM set or you get the EGT set depending on the aircraft. You lean it until it's correct. And that's it. That's you done for the cruise of the flight. Now, when you're descending, um, there are different kind of, you know, there's different approaches on this. Strictly speaking, if you're if you're under about 75% throttle coming down, you should be still running quite lean. But, and this is the big but, whenever you do mess about with the mixture of your engine, whenever you do do this, you must build in checking your mixture into your kind of, you know, pre-landing checks, if you like, or at least your downwind leg checks. Like, it's no good leaning out to 60%, and then you go down here to another airfield, and you're on your downwind leg and you're not checking your mixture again because if you're landing at an airfield down at sea level and you're at 60%, you are no way getting the best power out of that engine. So when you are down on the downwind leg at least, or even on the descent, think about putting the mixture back to full. Anything under 5,000 foot elevation of, a, of an airfield and you're probably gonna be on full anyway. Anything else, you're more or less guessing because you, you didn't do to get to do a run up down there anyway. So. The best advice really is, when you get down to downwind, think about just going full mixture. But uh, don't forget to do it, that's the thing. And this is the reason why many flight schools, certainly ones at low altitudes and you know anything under 5,000 feet altitude airfields, most of them don't even bother to teach their students how to lean. They just put it in the checklist as go mixture full rich. And the reason's very simple, because A, students will forget to put it back, and B, the risks of incorrect leaning have more severe consequences, you know, including engine damage and possibly doing a go-around without maximum power because you forgot to put the mixture back. 
And that's one of the reasons why they just leave it. They just burn more fuel. They'd rather just burn more fuel than take that risk. Um, so as I say, if you're going to do this, and by all means do do it, because it's you know what you should be doing, but do remember to build it into your kind of landing checklist. Finally, altitude. Um, altitude, I, I, keep, I keep saying density altitude, and I keep saying, you know, 5,000 feet. Altitude is only one factor in all this. Outside air temperature is another, and humidity. All of these, you know, contribute to the actual amount of oxygen getting into the engine, which is why, you know, you can be at like, you know, you can be at sea level, and it can be a very, very cold day, and your engine will actually perform better will generate more power than it was rated at because the density of the air is, is even higher than it would normally be at, this, at the expected temperature because cold air is denser and lower altitude is denser. And, and all these things make a difference, which is why you hear this term density altitude. Don't look it up on Google. It's, uh, it's another entire discussion which we're not going to go into. Um, but density altitude is a, is a big thing because if you're taken out off out of a high elevation airfield, like something in, say, um, Las Vegas area, you know, they can be like six, 7,000 foot elevation altitudes up there. And on top of that, you're looking at like 40 plus Celsius or 110 Fahrenheit. You know, that density altitude is, is pretty bad and you need to lean the mixture just to even get the white power, yet alone maximum power. But, you know, it's a, it's a whole other subject anyway. I've hopefully given you some techniques here to manage your, your mixture settings. Uh, so remember, if you've got an EGT gauge, use it. Um, just, just lean back until you get maximum peak, then go back in at like another 10%, that'll do it. Uh, if you don't, then start to use your RPM. Again, lean back uh, until you see the maximum RPMs and then go back in like another 10%. And that is a good rule of thumb to, you know, certainly for Microsoft Flight Sim, that's more than adequate. Uh, and you will, you know, burn less fuel and your engine will run a bit better. As I say, verb pitch props and, you know, all the rest of it, they're a, they're a bit of a different story. So this is only really for the uh, for the basic aircraft, shall we say. But hopefully it's given you understand of mixture, what it does and how to use it, and uh, cleared a few things up for you. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, guys. Until the next one, take care. Happy flying.